Hello all you wonderful people, welcome back to Lynch Paints and today we're going to be looking at how I do basing and hopefully you all learn something new today and you can try it out on your models at home. So today we're going to be, it's almost like a two-parter going on from the first model that we did um, about a month ago or so. I'm going to try and do these on a monthly basis if and when I can, um, which would be fantastic. So he is already stood on a ammo crate which does sort of help fill out his base just a little bit. If he wasn't, um, then he would most likely be stood on a rock. That's more of a Primaris thing, but we all know about that. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is that I'm just gonna introduce you to sort of the tools and some of the paints that I use and we'll get cracking on with. All right, so what we have here is a small collection of things that I use for basing. So. First of all, got a little pile of little tiny pebbles. I say pebbles, little kind of rocks. Um, it's so there's a semi coarse sort of size. So when you have it on the base, it looks like kind of proper rubble. And what I do is that I mix that in with um, with some of the Citadel sort of basing paints. And then I got a spare one here as well. So what I tend to do is is that I will take a couple of pinches of that. Drop it into the pot when it's kind of running low. You can kind of see in there and in the lid. And I just give it a little mix around. And what that does is it creates a really lovely paste of the paint itself plus the rocks as well. You also need quite an old brush. I don't know if I can get that to focus. But anyway, an old brush, everybody has them. Um, and it's, it's the brush that everybody has that you don't mind it fraying or becoming damaged because it's already damaged and frayed at the minute anyway. Um, and a little toothpick. As you can see, I've used this a lot. This is mainly for getting right up close into either existing scenery or the feet or whatever the model is posed with or standing on. So we're just gonna go ahead I've already dropped some pebbles in already. And then we're just gonna slap it on. And this kind of thing, basing, a basing I love because you can just kind of go zoop and then just unscrew your brain. And <laughs> just not not worry too much about it. And you just, just kind of blobbing it on. Dabbing it on. Getting it in and around. All right, now that is all covered. Um, what you can do, if you like, if you either have the spare parts for it or if the base is big enough, I'm gonna, not gonna do it with this, but you can, because it's quite thick and quite built up, you can just stick in a skull, a shoulder pad, a helmet, um, whatever faux, you think that you're going to be fighting most against or just something that you really want to just stick on a base. Why not? It's your world. You can do what you like. So we're going to leave that to dry and we'll be back soon. Okie dokie. So now that that's dry, and you can see that just adding, just by adding those pebbles into there, those little gravelly bits, it's just added just that little extra depth, that little extra detail in there. Now you can get this um, paint that I used in various different shades, not just grey but in different browns as well depending on the theme um, of basing that you're going with. I generally tend to use grey um, because you can give it, it's, it's quite a neutral colour because you can give it a, a brown wash to give it the appearance of brown or you can kind of leave it as is, you can give it a light dry brush. Um, some of the bases that I do that are grey, I just kind of cap with a little bit of snow on the top. Um, that would be my Dragon um, dragon Guard. Uh, if you want to see them, then do check out my Instagram at Lynch Paints. Um, but anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to grab some Storm Vermin Fur, and we're going to do a heavy dry brush over the top 
Um, and by if if you're not used to the phrase, heavy dry brush means that instead of taking nearly all of the paint off, um, you're actually keeping most of the paint on the brush. So you want to give it a good good coverage. Um, and the difference is this is more of a, a warm sort of grey, whereas the grey of the basin that we first put down uh, is is kind of like a, a bluish grey. So it um, just adds that that second sort of layer, just a little, little bit more depth. Um, I have gone just on the cape, just on the bottom there, you can sort of see. Um, but we can fix that in post-production, that will be fine. So I'm just going to give that a heavy dry brush. Um, and then that's, that's it. So, we're then going to grab our next paint, which is Administratum Grey. In which I believe is dried out. That's no good. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to make our own. Why not? Just going to grab a bit of Corax white and just add a little bit, a tiny bit, add it in a bit too much. Um, and of course the more white you add, the lighter it gets, and then the more you want to just remove from your brush. So you just stipple some off. You can use the back of your thumb sometimes just to get some of it off there. And then I tend to use the same brush um, when I'm dry brushing with bases, purely because you do have a little bit of the colour that you previously used left over on the brush. Um, which just helps just to blend it all in together. And also because I'm a bit lazy and I just can't be bothered to wash my brushes every time I use a different paint. Um, so <laughs> yeah, there is that as well. Hmm. Dropped him. I do that all the time. Um, and then again, just a little bit more white. Have that on. Get the excess off, and then just just gently run it run it over, and already it's already looking like the surface of the moon, which is the kind of theme that I'd like. So why not? Um, and then for a final final highlight, just gonna just dab a little bit of pure. Corax white. Get some excess off. And I'm just going to very, very gently, very gently, just run over the tops of the rocks, just picking out the very peaks. The lightest of highlights, just a few in there. ones in there just along the edge ones by its cloak now with the cloak um if you have painted up just just a, a basic cloak and you think oh that's not too bad i can repaint that that's fine um then go ahead if you have painted however a cloak and you're like oh my gosh i've spent hours painting this how am i ever going to repaint it that section without repainting the whole thing. What you can do is, if you, you, you would probably have to go for more of a weathered look. Um, so you can kind of take the color that you've already got and then just, just very, very lightly. And this is, I mean, there's hardly any paint on this at all. Focus. Um, so then what you do is, this is a, you just really lightly, just on the very, very end, very, very end. This is dry brush. And then what that does, that creates a lovely weathered effect. Just at the bottom of your cape. Um, and you can do this as well, just on boots. 
And remember, with dry brushing, less is more. So now that's done. From here, what you can do, if you'd like, is that you could apply a wash over the top. Um, like, for example, Agrax Earthshade, just to add more of a brown element to it, which is totally fine. You could stick skulls on it. You could add shoulder pads from Space Marines. You could add in little bits of flock if you wanted to. You could do all sorts. Um, I am going to probably add a little bit of static grass to it. And then I was going to tidy up just, just the rim of the base. And I'll be back in just the moment. And so there you have it, that is Gorzag Git Thumper and his sidekick Nicket, fully painted, based, the lot. So with Nicket, I use the same principle with the skin tones and the leather work, and I thought it'd be quite interesting just to have him on a slightly higher level on his base with that bit of crumbled ruin building there. And just adding in a tiny, tiny bit of flock. Um, static grass just onto Gorsak's base just gives it just that little edge a little bit of diversity there and just makes the piece just stand out just that little bit more so I hope you enjoyed this video again you know this is following on from my first video of how to paint Gorsag um, if you do have any questions then you can refer to that video or if not, if you still have any other sort of further questions, then do drop me a comment down below. I'll be delighted to, to read and reply. Um, in the meantime, if you like my work, then do check me out on Instagram at Lynch Paints. If you have any commission requests, then you can message me on here or via Instagram or via Gmail. Um, and the links I will put down in the description below. If you fancy picking yourself up some new Orc models, or any models in particular, doesn't have to be Games Workshop, could be any other system at all, then why not check out my affiliate link for Wayland Games. They are a UK-based third-party retailer that specialise in wargamings, card games, and every kind of hobby essential that you could possibly think of. So if you like any of those things, then do check out my link to them in the description below. So in the meantime, stay safe, stay beautiful, and we'll catch you next time.